Okay, um, our next talk up, we have Andrea O'Neill. All right, good morning. My name is Andy O'Neill, and I'm going to be co-presenting with Maya Hayden, and we're with USGS, and we're going to be presenting on future coastal hazards in Humboldt County uh, using the Coastal Storm Modeling System, or Cosmos. And we'll do our darndest to stay on time, because I know we're running a little late. Um, but while you have Maya and myself presenting today, I do want to acknowledge that we're presenting on a large interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary team uh, that's been working on this for some time, and they're really excited to bring you some products soon. Okay. So just to start off with, we all know that our communities are already dealing with coastal hazards. It's something that we've been living with. Sea level rise poses a risk because it's going to amplify and add to those hazards. Um, and sea, the rate of sea level rise is increasing. The latest research shows that across the United States, we can expect about 30 centimeters or half a foot of sea level rise by mid-century. And by end of century, again, depending on the scenarios that have been brought up by a couple of presentations so far, that can be anywhere from a meter to two meters by end of century. And just that sea level rise alone is gonna add to the hazards that we see now. What is a once in a lifetime event could occur annually or every day, mid-century and end century. However, when considering storms, that's, that increases that risk exponentially. So when considering the impact of storms on that sea level rise, about three times more people can be at risk and this is really the motivation and the motivating factor in the development of Cosmos and how um, we kind of built that, uh, built that up, is to really support uh, science for local decision making and coordination of communities across broader geographic scales. Uh, we do this by considering the future evolution of storm patterns, right? We're looking and taking future storms uh, that are in the global climate models, not using historical examples. We use models that are extensively tested and calibrated with local data. Um, we are using numerical physics-based models that include all the forcing relevant for these coastal hazards, that's tides, waves, wind, sea level pressure, discharge. And we're taking those model outputs and explicitly mapping them out uh, so you get a very fine scale uh, footprint of the hazards. And these are all done for a large range of sea level rise scenarios and storm scenarios, uh, leading to a robust library of uh, scenarios and outputs that you can query for a range of planning needs. Uh, so this is just a look at the Cosmos framework, right? To, to look at that, those these local impacts, we scale those large changes on a global scale and we scale them down to the local level so that we can get at these local impacts. Uh, we do that by using a series of nested models of increasing resolution where we can take those big changes, introduce the, like, the local building, so such as like wave generation at the local scale, and then finally introduce like intergravity uh, impacts. And as mentioned, like we explicitly map those at the local scale. And not only do we have the data available uh, for technical use as so download to interact and query with, but we try and put that up on easy to use uh, graphic interfaces on the web so that they're accessible to everyone. And this is done not only for one sea level rise uh, scenario or just a couple time slots, but it's done for a whole range of sea level rise, anywhere from zero all the way up to five meters of sea level rise for California. We actually have some additional sea level rise scenarios in California. And storm frequencies covering daily or average conditions all the way to a 100-year storm. And our products include not only coastal flooding, and that includes not only the footprint of the flooding, but flood depth, flood, uh, the surface flood elevation, duration, min and max flooding extent, right, considering uncertainty of the models, the wave heights, the coincident wave heights driving that flooding, on velocity, but also shoreline change, cliff retreat projections, and rising groundwater hazards. So this is just a look at how that framework is built out for Northern California for the flood modeling specifically. So we have a regional model that provides the boundary conditions to higher resolution models. 
kind of at the sub-regional scale. And finally, we have some high resolution models uh, taking into account all the local nearshore processes uh, so that we can get at these expli explicitly mapped products at the end state. And this is a look at some of the preliminary data that is coming soon. So this is uh, an example of the flooding output for uh, current sea levels and one meter of sea level rise. This is a no storm scenario. So you can see that the difference in that flood output with just one meter of sea level rise. But coincident with this, right, we have flood depth. This is uh, no sea level rise, but a hundred year storm. This is the coincident depth that is gonna be synonymous with that flood footprint. And then these are models, right? They are tools, they are not crystal balls. They're, um, there's been some other modeling uh, output that's been uh, presented, and these are all great models, and we should use all of them and understand their strengths and their weaknesses. And so with our data, we include this flood potential, which is if you include the uncertainty of the model, you include vertical land motion, and you understand the accuracy of the digital or elevation data going into it, this could yield your maximum flood potential and your minimum flood potential. And so we really encourage using this in any planning consideration. Um, but that's just the flooding, right? We have other products that we include. So uh, we have a shoreline change product available. If anybody's familiar with Sean Vitusik's Co uh, Cosmos Coast, I'll put it's really a, a data-driven one-line shoreline coast model that shows the response to the beach with sea level rise and storms. That data is available in multiple formats and for multiple model cases as well. We also have cliff retreat protections, and this is actually a model that's built from many models. It's an ensemble model, and those projections uh, show cliff retreat with uh, associated uncertainty across the Northern California region. And then finally, we have groundwater hazards. So while we, it's very easy to understand, you know, marine inundation that's marching across the land, um, there's actually uh, a potential underwater hazards that come with that rising seawater and rising groundwater table. So you can have hazards that happen behind your flood walls or behind your natural um, living shoreline. And so considering groundwater hazards, we can potentially have much more exposure than overland flooding alone. And so this is just a look at some of those uh, impacts already available on the tools that we have available. And that concludes my portion of the talk, and I'm going to hand it over to Maya to talk more about those tools. Thanks, Andy. So um, I'm going to talk about basically how we can take some of that hazard information and start to translate it into risk. So as Andy talked about with the Cosmos model products, we basically get three hazard um, products. One around flooding. This is what we're actively working on um, and for Humboldt County are hoping to have out by the end of the summer or early fall. We have coastal erosion, um, which already exists. This is only for the outer coast, so it doesn't include um, inside of Humboldt Bay. But so those products exist already and are available for Humboldt County. And then the rising groundwater information, which is also available statewide. Um, but if you're really thinking about it, um, you know, hazard isn't a hazard unless it's a, a impacting something that we care about. And so we, um, we can start to look at basically the spatial overlap between these hazard zones and assets that we care about to start to consider risk. And we do that um, through the Hazard Exposure Reporting and Analytics tool, or HERA, as we call it. Um, so HERA really provides you that kind of mapping interface so that you can estimate community level and county exposure to coastal hazards for just a subset of um, assets. And so we have those again for the three hazard products for flooding, groundwater, and, and shoreline change. Um, and this really allows you to you know, build maps and think about estimating hazard exposure of people, um, economic assets, infrastructure, et cetera. So this is an example of what the interface looks like for the coastal flooding tool. Um, so on the, the left kind of hand side is where you make all of your selections. Um, so you can select your uh, community of interest, and these are based on census designated places um, or your county of interest. You, you can select then the 
um, the, the storm and sea level rise scenarios that you're interested in, um, and then think about what assets of interest, whether that's um, residential information or critical facilities. And in addition to the sort of mapping component, you get these kind of dashboard analytics. Um, and so one of them on the, um, the right is really looking at, um, in this example, I've selected uh, San, uh, San Luis Obispo County. I'm looking at the three foot sea level rise, 100 year storm event. And I'm interested in the impact or potential exposure on total residents in this community. And so um, you can see the, the totals and community percentages of asset exposure. The center uh, graph really allows you to look at what the changes in exposure might be with different sea level rise assumptions. And then the final one on the right um, to look at potential changes in exposure with different storms. Whoops. And we're pulling asset information from a variety of sources. Um, so this is coming from U.S. Census data, from Department of Homeland Security information. Um, the National Land Cover Database looks at land use, land cover. And then also for infrastructure and critical facilities, a lot of times we'll pull state level data, um, which might have better information than some of these national data sets. Um, and again, this is just a GIS-based analysis uh, for this, these selected jurisdictions and community assets. The last thing I want to touch on is just how this information has been used um, primarily for coastal climate adaptation planning in other regions where it's already available. Really, if you're looking at the sort of phases through adap the adaptation planning process, which that kind of our arc um, image in the upper right shows, um, the Cosmos information is really applicable during the vulnerability assessment stage of an adaptation planning process. So it's been used by a lot of um, organizations to do coastal zone management plans like LCP updates, um, you know, infrastructure and capital investment plans, hazard mitigation plans, lots of opportunities. In addition, because the web tools are you know, public and relatively easy to use um, for a lot of public engagement and communication efforts that can help support. Um, and then, so I just wanna leave you with how to access this information. Um, we provide these basically as um, downloadable geospatial hazard data, and that's through these USGS data releases. So the QR code in the upper right corner will take you to that. And again, what exists for Humble um, Bay right now are just the shoreline change on the outer coast and the groundwater information, but the flood products will be available um, at the end of the summer or early fall. And then we also provide two web tools to help people understand and visualize the hazard products. Um, the one in California is Our Coast, Our Future, which we have produced in um, collaboration with Point Blue Conservation Science. It's been a really great partner. And then um, in all the regions that we have these hazard products, um, we have this HERA tool. And so again, that has, you know, kind of more of just a viewer as well as these hazard exposure and analytics, the, the hazard exposure analytics information. Okay, so as I mentioned, we've got um, Humboldt County we're, that we're actively working on um, to get the flood products out. Once that's done, we'll complete the remainder of the kind of gap in California that we have in, in Northern California. We do a lot of training and technical assistance, so please feel free to reach out um, to myself and to Andy. Um, and then for those of you that work you know, beyond Humboldt Bay area, we do also have modeling underway in the Pacific Northwest and in um, Alaska. And we've got a lot of geographies that you know, currently exist, including a recent release of Hawaii and the Pacific Island territories. So there's the, the links and, and import, and definitely feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you.